Glad to have you back. Now let's delve into our full bulletin. The rift between Somalia's federal government and Portland State has reached stratospheric heights of tension as both President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed and his counterpart Prime Minister Hamza Abdi Barre asserted their dissatisfaction with the Abdullahi-led regime. Mohammed urged Portland President Abdullahi Deni to prioritize the voices of the people in the upcoming local government elections. This follows concerns of potential election manipulation in Portland. Here is a full story. The rift between Somalia's federal government and Portland state has reached stratospheric heights of tension as both President Hassan Sheikh and his counterpart Prime Minister Barre professed their dissatisfaction with Abdullahi-led regime. Mahmoud urged Portland President Abdullahi Deni to prioritize the voices of the people in the upcoming local government elections. This statement follows concerns of potential election manipulation in Portland. In direct criticism of Deni, Mahmoud warned that ignoring the people's wishes will undo the progress made in the last two decades and even lead to political unrest. He also cautioned Deni against conducting voting without consensus as this could lead to more political crises. This came just three days after Prime Minister of the Somali government, Hamza Abdi Barre, urged Portland State to spearhead unity of the nation other than vanguarding politics of division while speaking in an event on Mogadishu security. <laughs> أو أباهن أو شروطه ورشقين تا دولة الفدرال كا إيو استيجدا وزارة هذا المالية لما أنت كلا وزارة هذا المالية ورشقيان مركا لقرأ هذا بنتنا هذي دين عفسي أي كاد جينو تايه أو بيش السجارات أما تبنات أما كوبي تبنات السنة كان أي تايه دين ت دت كسو مالية شن بليل كبدن أو عليس ديم هذا أو دول سرة الدنيا ده أن توقع إنه ينجع فينيس كورهم وهذا الشقير أو شر لو يسوي ما ده أو دولة بنت لان لو هاي هذا يوقف شر عند كورهم يا مسؤول كنا قرنا شعب كبنت لان مسؤول كمان قرنا يا ما ملك مسؤول كنا قرنا أرين تاس هذا يدعوه وحين نقول ده تا أرين تاريخ ذات قشة وتاريخ ملوء بين الناس وحنشجع ذاتك سومالية غير بطلان ولا له يا استمالة سياسية أقوى هندا سيفل ساي تجا وذات بسيل وحق وجاله وحن بو وحن لا يهاي ممد ندين تاريخ ملوء إن بطلان أكو قرنت ممد ندين إلا إلى هذا دين عفسكي والله فشل ماي يا فشلي بنت الله لما لما قاعد كرتاس وحن ربع ويرى يا دولة بنت الله يا ملاح هذا ولا ليال أريمه دين عفسكو سياسة معها سياسة كسرة The Premier accused Portland State for sabotaging development projects such as the employment of 400 teachers in Portland. Barre urged Denny not to orchestrate a political crisis, warning that Portland President will be responsible for any failure in debt forgiveness. He also pointed that inclusivity and transparency are prerequisite for the government to accord and support the forthcoming elections. Denny reacted with anger to the accusations, throwing more fuel into the fire. In a speech to his supporters, 
He accused President Mahmoud of being anti-democratic and hinted at the possibility of a disputed election in Portland. <laughs> he further on labeled Prime Minister Hamza as the psychophone and a conveyor belt for his senior's political ideologies. This political impasse has led to Portland's political isolation, which is creating internal crisis and uncertainty for the future. In January, Portland cut ties with Somalia's government, declaring itself independent government until the provision constitution is completed and a referendum is held. The international community has called for the restoration of relations between Portland and Somalia's federal government, but so far, their pleas have fallen on deaf ears. This growing impasse threatens the stability and progress made in Somalia over the last two decades. The Somalia National Army have killed five Al-Shabaab militants and injured three others in the lower Shabele army sources say. These operations have been largely successful in weakening the extremist group which has been responsible for numerous attacks on the civilians and government officials. The militants were reportedly hiding in the area and had been planning to carry out attacks on civilians and government officials. The Somalia National Army have killed five Al-Shabaab militants and injured three others in Lower Shabele, army sources say. These operations have been largely successful in weakening the extremist group, which has been responsible for numerous attacks on civilian and government officials. In the latest operation, which took place in Lower Shabele, the Somalia National Army killed five Al-Shabaab militants and injured three others. The militants were reportedly hiding in the area and had been planning to carry out attacks on civilians and government officials. Major Nur Mohamed Gabo, who was in charge of the operation, stated that Somalia National Army also conducted similar operations in Odegle, Johar, and Ebute. These operations were aimed at rooting out Al Shabaab militants who had been hiding in the area. The Somalia National Army has been stepping up its efforts to combat Al Shabaab which has been waging a deadly insurgency in the country for years. The extremist group has been responsible for a series of high-profile attacks, including bombings and assassinations, targeting civilians and government officials. Despite the challenges faced by Somalia National Army, the country's security forces have made significant gains in the recent months. The government has been working to rebuild capacity of the army and has received support from international partners in this regard. As the Somalia National Army continues to target Al-Shabaab militants, and their bases, it is hoped that the security situation in the country will improve and that civilians will be able to live in peace and security. The ongoing efforts of the government and its international partners to build the capacity of the Somali National Army are vital in this regard and will hopefully lead to lasting peace and stability in the country. Elsewhere, approximately six mortar shells were fired at a recently liberated town of Haradere on Wednesday night. No casualties were reported so far. The motors struck residential areas, according to the federal government representatives in the town, but they did not mention any potential casualties. Al-Shabaab typically conducts such attacks on villages and towns under the control of the government, including the capital Mogadishu, although no one has yet claimed responsibility for the attack. In a joint military operation last Thursday, the Somali National Army and local forces killed 60 Al-Shabaab militants in an effort to disrupt the militants' attempts to reassemble nearby. One of their biggest victories since beginning an offensive against the group last year came in January when Somalia's government-led forces seized Haradere and neighboring town of Galat. Up until 2011, Haradere was a significant base for pirates stealing merchant ships. Al-Shabaab later took control of it after first rebelling against the government in 2007 and swearing allegiance to al the Somali National Army has sprung into action to evacuate hundreds of residents displayed by floods in Baladwain in the Hiran region. The area has been hit by flooding caused by heavy rainfall that resulted in the busting of the river Shabele. The situation has created humanitarian crisis in the region, which calls for immediate intervention to save lives. The Somali National Army has sprung into action 
to evacuate hundreds of residents displaced by floods in Beledwene in Hiran region. The area hit by flooding caused heavy rainfall that resulted in the busting of River Shavele. The situation has created a humanitarian crisis in the region, which calls for immediate intervention to save lives. On Wednesday, the Hir Shabele region vice president visited the Somali Disaster Management Agency, SODMA headquarters, and held discussions with the National Disaster Management Authority, SODMA chairman, Mohamud Moalim Abdule and deputy chairman, Ahmed Abdi Adan. The leaders discussed ways of assisting residents affected by the floods in Beledwene and promised to address the challenges caused by the floods. In response to the situation, the leaders pledged to provide humanitarian assistance to those who had been displaced by the floods. They also warned that the situation could worsen, calling on residents to exercise caution and take all necessary precautions to stay safe. The Somali National Army intervention has brought hope to the affected areas, with many expressing their gratitude for the swift response. The displacement caused by the floods had brought many hardships to the residents, who were forced to flee their homes with little or no resources to help them endure the situation. Efforts to elevate the dire situation have been ongoing, with various stakeholders, both local and international, making commitments to offer assistance. However, the challenges is enormous and it will require sustained support and cooperation from all parties to provide adequate humanitarian assistance to those affected by the floods. As the Somali National Army continues to evacuate residents and provide much needed assistance, it is hoped that this will bring a measure of relief and hope to the people of Beledwene and the surrounding areas. The situation in the region remains delicate and authorities are urging caution to prevent further loss of life and property. Egypt's Minister of Environment Yasmin Fuad and her Somali counterpart Khadija al makzumi who recently met to discuss ways to enhance bilateral cooperation in the field of environment and climate change. The two ministers signed a joint executive program and discussed capacity building initiatives to strengthen Somalia's environmental sector. Egypt's Minister of Environment, Yasmin Fuad, and her Somali counterpart, Khadija al makzumi recently met to discuss ways to enhance bilateral cooperation in the field of environment and climate change. The two ministers signed a joint executive program and discussed capacity-building initiatives to strengthen Somalia's environmental sector. The meeting focused on the latest developments regarding the agreement on the Executive Programme 2023-2025 to of the Memorandum of Understanding signed between the two countries in 2015. Cooperation areas include environmental monitoring, environmental assessment of projects, integrated coastal zone management, climate change, air quality, training, capacity building, and environmental education. Al Makhzumi expressed her aspiration to build on Egypt's expertise in environmental and climate issues to develop Somalia's institutional system and cadres. Egypt and Somalia's joint efforts in the field of environment and climate change reflect the growing importance of international cooperation in addressing global challenges. As countries face increasing environmental pressures, such partnerships can help build resilience and foster sustainable development. That's all we are prepared for you tonight from our desk here in Mogadishu. Thanks to the Dalsan Media Fraternity for making this news bulletin a success. I was a presenter, Abraham Yusuf, and have yourself a lovely night.